You have a DualSense Edge controller. You just bought it and now you have a PC. You plugged it in and you just realized one thing, that your DualSense Edge controller is pretty tough to program, especially if you don't have a PlayStation 5. It can absolutely be 100% done. Make sure if you find this video useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I will tell you, first you need a program. If you already have it, it's gonna be DS4 for Windows or DS5 for Windows, whichever you prefer. If you have that program already downloaded, I have great news for you because you can skip some of these steps in this video. Just go down straight to the timestamp down below. But first things first, you have to have your DualSense Edge controller here. We all either love it or we hate it. And of course, if you want to know my review on it, I do have it in the card right above. Buttons can be configured in either Bluetooth or it can also be configured via USB. First thing you have to do is you're gonna to have to open up your browser or go in the description box down below as I will have the link for it, but you're gonna to go to DS4 Windows. It's gonna look something like this. You're gonna see DS4 Windows and DS5 Windows. Just click get started. And from here, you just wanna make sure to download everything that you possibly need for it. Now the good news is, DS4 for Windows makes it really simple and easy to install all the necessary requirements that you need in order to play with your DualSense Edge controller or your DualSense controller. Make sure to follow through with, with each and every step. So right down here, you're gonna see download the latest for DS4 Windows X64 package. You're gonna, just gonna click it. And then when you do, you're just gonna click a download. Once you download, you're gonna get a zip file like this. And what I would strongly suggest to do is just right click it and just extract it. You're just gonna extract it all and just put it into say your downloads folder. Once you extract it, it's gonna look something like this. Now you're gonna just click DS4 for Windows and when you do, it's gonna have the installation screen. Install all the required drivers that you need. Don't freak out if you see VIGE M bus because that is a required driver that you need in order for your DualSense Edge to work or your DualShock 4 or your DualSense controller, whichever. And you're gonna need hit hide. And if you want, you can also have faker input. We're gonna go into a DS4 for Windows. Once you have all the required drivers, you're, then you're gonna go over to your profile. Now, typically it's you're not gonna get any of this just gonna click new because we're gonna start fresh because this is gonna be something new for you. So it's gonna ask up here, it's gonna ask if we want a preset option. Now you don't have to do this, but you can if you choose to. Personally to me, I don't really need it. So I'm just gonna click no. And now you can really assign your controller to really do anything that you want it to do. Now, in order to control your back triggers or your function, Make sure you go down here. This is what you're, the key that you're looking for. This is how you're really gonna change the controller. Now it says unassigned here. So just double click it. And then once you double click it, you're gonna see a module like this come up. Now you're gonna go here and then you're gonna do any adjustments that you would like on the controller. Now, if you want say the X button onto the into your trigger you can but let's go up here actually we're going to select the preset here because we want a dual sense edge controller output we're going to make it dual shock 4 so anyway to get to the point we made it into a dual shock 4 so we're just going to make the bottom left paddle we're going to double click it and now this is probably something you want to see more of now you can do xbox controller if you choose to either way will work but the point is, is if you want to do something like L3, you can just click it and there, bam, you have the left paddle set to L3. You're going to go to the bottom right paddle, double click it. You're going to make this R3. Function left, which is at the top left of the controller, what you usually do to switch the profile, you can actually set a control, which is nice. So double click that. And we're just going to tick, click X for the hell of it or cross and then go to function right. And I'm just gonna put triangle. Now I'm gonna name this test profile. You can see it in action and see if it actually works.
Best part is after you do program it, make sure you don't forget to save it. Otherwise the profile will not save such as I will call this test profile. I'm going to click save. And then once you do, here it is. Now you can even select the color for your test profile. You can change, uh, you can use that as your uh, profile color. So that way you know if you're in the correct one that you want to be. So as you see, DualSense Edge, we're gonna go into Remnant 2 to see how well it works. Now, as you saw, I set the function buttons to X and triangle, and it works perfectly well in game. You have your back paddles that is set to L3 and R3, preferably, which is just exactly how I wanted it. Now, you can play your games without any issues with a DualSense Edge controller without any problems. Now, one thing I do have to say is it will not be programmed via hardware, meaning if you put this onto a PlayStation 5 or to another PC, it's not going to remember because it's going to remember via DS4 Windows. So it's programmed by software on Windows. So that way it's set to your button configuration the way you like it. Now, if you do want to bring it with you, make sure to save it in DS4 Windows, which you can easily do. To profiles in here, you can actually export it. And now you can save this XML file anywhere you like. Call it test profile. We're just going to save it under... Uh, this DS4 Windows, so we'll just call this test profile. And now you can take it onto the go, so that way you never lose your personal configuration that you have for that controller. Now you even have where you can set certain configurations. You can add a program such as add the Steam game. Now, if you really like your settings, all you have to do is click the Steam game that you personally like, and then you can actually have it set to, you can have it set to automatic profile to that game. So for example, if you want to set it to Cyberpunk 2077, you can just double click it. And then we're going to call this test profile and now save it. So anytime we open up Cyberpunk 2077, now the test profile will play. Now you can easily set to many different configurations. That way you don't have to really worry about saving hardware. With the controller side, when you get into the profiles, you can customize it exactly how you would like it. Again, it's really not difficult to use. You can mess with it every tenth, uh, every tenth of the way to see how you personally like the dead zones. You can set your anti-dead zones. If you want a video based on it, make sure you let me know and I will create a video on how you can set your different dead zones or your output curves or however you would like to set your controller. Hey man, guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is struggling on trying to configure their buttons for their DualSense Edge controller, make sure you share this video with them. Also, if you're not part of the big wonderful fan man, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And also for all the newest updates, make sure to follow my X handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan man, guys, do you love the DualSense Edge controller or do you have another controller that's on your mind? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mito, signing out.